I am very grateful to the professors who have encouraged me to be here. Mm -hmm. Dr. Chakravarti is here. I know Dr. Ah, Amanda. <laughs> ah. And then uh, also, Thank you. Thank you. Another third person, right? Uh, oh, Dr. Amanda Banks. So she all three you. groups, uh, <coughs> if they are represented, I truly appreciate your presence. Uh, we are very privileged to have Dr. Francesca Caputo from Italy, so who, who is a Fulbright scholar, and we've already been to McDowell County, so if anybody's from McDowell County, your friends there should tell you all about what they learned yesterday at Riverview and Mountview. So we are very appreciative of her being with us, and I'm hoping there will be a few folks from the community because we had to cancel the talk talk session and they thought there was one then too. But if anybody is here from the community, we appreciate you too. So, Dr. Francesca. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. understand that the individual suffering is uh, a product of an, an interplay, an interaction with the environment. Okay. So I started to, to do research about ecological behavior, about recycling, about uh, the determinants of protest against la uh, landfills and uh, toxic waste dumps in my land, in my territory. So uh, today I'm going to introduce you uh, something about the Italian culture uh, and uh, just a bit of my research about uh, a program that we are running in Italy in several schools that is called Gaia program. Uh, as the name of the, uh, the ancient of name uh, of, uh, that Greeks gave to our health considering her as a living being to respect, to know. So, uh, I would like to introduce myself with some picture before. So, to let you understand which type of psychologist I am, okay? <laughs> and also to show you some, the beauty of some places uh, in Italy that I have with my cat.
Hi. Which type of psychology am I? Hi. You can see that. Okay. You don't have uh, other chairs. So. Uh, what did you see in this video? Tell me. What? Well, we do a lot of activity to the community. So it's a community approach that I use. I did several projects for urban planning. You you saw the. Uh, the maps of the city uh, for the a <coughs> participatory design for the urban planning of several townships. So I was a facilitator of a group of a community to uh, to let them to think about the which vision, uh, uh, which development of the city they could think about. So social and environmental psychology <coughs> is very close to sociology. Okay. So what else? What did you see more? Tell me. What you can uh, say about Italian culture, for example, from this video? What did you see? Very diverse. Diverse. Also the land landscapes and the towns, the places. What else? Someone else. People have a sense of belonging and togetherness. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. That's nice. And I try to promote this sense of belonging, sense of community. What else? I notice a lot of artwork. Artwork, yes. I try to use art in my practice. I'm also a painter, and I am trained also as a facilitator of the theater of the press. And uh, it's a participative theater uh, that we can use to involve people also with body-based experiences. So what else? I'm trying to involve you as well. <laughs> I'm always a facilitator. What, uh, um, what surprised you? That was something that surprised you? Do you know the cities that uh, Florence, Naples, or no? You didn't know Florence. Okay, let, let's see how the story of this uh, Italian culture affected me and how my life crossed the Italian culture. What do you know about Italy? If we have to start with this uh, brainstorming, okay? Do you know brainstorming is a, is a technique that we use to, uh, to, um, to understand your lay knowledge, <coughs> your theory, because no, no one is a blank plate, okay? So the first thing that I do when I approach a community, I do a brainstorming. It's a very simple technique to understand they implicit theory. So the first word that pops up in your mind when we talk about Italy, Italian culture, because this is the topic of today that I want to share with you and also some research about Gaia program that I did in Italy. So what do you think? The first word that pops up in your mind? Pizza. Pizza. <laughs> Thank you. I know it. Family. So, uh, someone can help me to write on the blackboard. Someone? Who wants to write? Who wants to write? Come. Come, come, come. Come, come please. We are going to do an interactive, an interactive lesson today. But maybe we can take also two chairs for the, for the people who are not. Yeah, they don't need to sit down. <laughs> they can be more comfortable. So, Italian culture, pizza, and uh, all roads lead to Rome. The old roads to Rome. <laughs> okay, can you write a pizza? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Pizza? 
All wrong, two wrong. Right, right, everything. All the more. <laughs> <laughs> All roads bring to Rome, we say. Yes. What else? History. History. Good. What else? Grapes. Binary. Then your grapes. 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 Ah, grapes. Leather. Yeah, grapes. Wine. Yes. What else? Leather. Leather, yes. Good wines. Good wines. <laughs> what else? What pop, 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 pop in your mind? The first word. What? Colosseum. Colosseum. Yeah, Colosseum. Colosseum in Rome. Yeah, Colosseum. What else? Spaghetti. What? Spaghetti. 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 <laughs> okay, spaghetti. What else? It has to be a, a story, guys. So a story. It means a lot of words. He doesn't have time to, to write all the words. Spaghetti. Film. Ah, someone said film. Movie. What is this? <coughs> okay. What else? Religion. Religion. Mm. Uh, there is uh, the Vatican. Yes. Church. What else? Soccer. Soccer. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's very famous. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Soccer. Yeah. What else? Nothing else? <laughs> Ferrari, you can say also your word. Eh? You can write your word. What is your word? <laughs> yes, what pops up in your mind when we talk about Italian culture? Um, um, I, mean, I was going to say pasta with some burgers. So it's not getting. Pasta with some burgers, okay. <laughs> Wonderful, guys. Do you have any other word? Your word? Tradition and family. Tradition? Ah, traditions and the other word that you said? Family. Family. A sense of family. Okay. Okay, guys. Some other words? Vacation and leisure time. Vacation and leisure time. Okay. Good. <coughs> Roger, do you want to give us your word? <laughs> okay, guys. And that's nice to see religion, soccer, Ferrari, tradition, family, vacation, leisure time, pizza, all lots to wrong, to wrong, pizza, regrets, leather, film, spaghetti. So you have a good uh, we have a good repertory of uh, the stereotypes of uh, okay of uh, Italy. <laughs> it's wonderful. Italy. Okay. We don't have mob. Mob is mafia, is another stereotype. Oh <laughs> Maybe we, we should have also this one. So I will present to you an image of, um, of Italy that maybe includes some of this, okay? but not just this. Because of course I lived there for 58 years now. <laughs> I'm 38. And uh, I. I was a researcher here, I was a professor at the university, I was a, a, an actual researcher, as you saw in the picture, with the several communities. So, let's see. Archaeology, architecture, myth, and art. Of course, I will tell you a story, okay? I'm a storyteller. It's my subjective experience. And uh, uh, mm, to say how my personal experience as a researcher, as a psychologist, but also as a, a citizen, okay, human being, has crossed this domain. 
So the place and their stories, the culture of nature, resources and threats, people, customs and community. Why is this story located? Naples, the city of castles, music, art, sea and mud maze. This is one of the castles of Naples. Uh, we have four or five castles in, in, uh, in Naples. The three. Luca and Bani di Luca in, in Tuscany, where uh, I work in a school that is called Global Village. Uh, that is a school of psychotherapy, body psychotherapy that is based on mindfulness. Florence, where I, uh, I taught as a professor in the school, and uh, Passignano su Trasmino, Perugia, is in the center of uh, Italy, where there is an eco village in the center of a, a education, environmental education. <coughs> and places, of course, characterize our culture and identity. When we introduce ourselves, the first thing that we say, the name and after <coughs> I'm from, I'm from, okay? So uh, we are affected also by the stories of this place and the myths. Myths that are, uh, Jung said, uh, Jung was a psychologist, uh, said the myths are the uh, representation of an unconscious, the collective unconscious. So the sunny, volcanic, and mysterious city of Naples do you know that there is a volcano, the uh, uh, Vesuvio, but not Vesuvio, but it's not the only one. We have all in the surrounding several uh, um, uh, volcanoes. And uh, it has this type of place as seen the flourish flourishment of talent expressed in all the art, in the music that is very famous all over the world, the classical music, the opera. And, uh, and that is seen as an emotional expression of individuals, but also a transpersonal way to connect death and the life. The upper world with the under world. And I will uh, uh, take this metaphor in the, our uh, uh, story. Vesuvius, for example, in the 79 AD, knew its top spewing tons of ash and sulfuric ga uh, gas into the surrounding Pompeii, Herculaneum, ca causing this that we can still admire the city, the, uh, the, the, the old, the ancient city of Pompeii. We can admire the frescoes, the walls, the ruins that are still there, all the city, and also the the bodies, the cast of the bodies that died in that moment, 79 AD, we are talking about. We smell the history, someone of that said history. The difference, the big difference that I noticed, of course, coming here, is that I, I cannot smell the, the monuments. <laughs> the, the, so, Naples, for example, it, it, it is, mm, there is a myth and uh, uh, several legends about uh, the, the birth of Naples. This is one of my paintings, because I'm used to this. It's narrated that Naples was born from the death of a mermaid that decided to die by drowning in the sea in the despair of being rejected by the hero Ulysses. Do you know the story of Ulysses, mm -hmm. the Greek hero, the Lysel. So this is the beauty of the Naples of my city, the seaside and the, the proscenium of nature, okay? And a, a fertile land, rich of views of lakes, seaside, mountains, and myths in the Aeneid also of Virgil narrates that Tro the Trojan Aeneas, ancestor of the founders of Rome, came here to look for his father 
descending to the underworld through a cave near the lake cavern was considered the, that was considered the door of the hell. So we have okay the, the all these ruins that uh, uh, of archaeology that are the signs of a Greek and the Roman culture. So the Greek signs are underground below the Roman walls. You can see a stratification. We will see Greek uh, and after Roman and the, and the new uh, buildings up. And the ancient Acropolis of Gume, for example, with the temples of for Jupiter and Diana still raised on the top of the hill in Campi Fregreno. So the amphitheater and, uh, for example, it's beautiful that in, in, uh, in the city of Naples you can uh, you can go in a house, uh, you can see a secret passage that is under a bed in a house and you find yourself 40 meters below in a, a Roman amphitheater and the sixth earth. That's a mystery. And uh, you know, we are continuously plunked in the past and this helps us to connect with our ancestors and sisters and a deep sense of mystery. We have also archeology span under the sea. <laughs> it's beautiful. We can, uh, uh, with snorkeling and see the see the mosaic mosaic of the Roman uh, houses and the Roman baths, for example, opium was sucked to feed soul and body for the uh, Romans. So they have love for a good idolatry. Uh, uh, for them was. Uh, was so sacred to feed the body and soul to be created and be in contact with nature. Something that we have lost and we have to do some training course of mindfulness to understand how can we slow down, uh, okay, to be present in our breath, in our, uh, to be more in contact with nature. Architecture. This castle, for example, that is uh, in Naples on the, on the seaside and uh, is, is a, of the Middle Age. Okay? We have also uh, structures, uh, buildings of the uh, uh, 18th century in the lake, for example, of important uh, in, uh, architects. And uh, the, the life on the street, that is something that I need to say that is very important. To, to see the street as public spaces. So the kids play on the street. <laughs> and uh, yeah, this alley uh, where some toys to get in, but it, it free, can still dry the clothes hanging on the balcony. <laughs> there is this habit to take the... the and uh, you said, um, you said the soccer, so Soccer is very, <laughs> it's very famous, and uh, uh, the, the kids play on the street. It's a, a very good habit, not just on the, on the video games in the houses, okay? But they, uh, they go on the square and they play on the street, so they dive with different types of, uh, of dives <laughs> in the city. So, what do I miss? I miss walking on the streets and meeting by chance acquaintances without any schedule before. The maze is an inlay made with little and big stones, such as, as public space where the crowds cannot come in. Streets that know the step of a thousand, millions of people and more, from the Greek and Roman entire till now. In some hours of the day, since the time stops running, the legs and knees are not in a hurry. They can walk slowly, letting the land bless the humid smell of the monument. And so without planning it, you are sitting on a table outside the bar taking a coffee. It's very famous, the coffee express. And in my city, Naples, uh, in Naples was created pizza and uh, pasta and uh, coffee, espresso and uh, so, Baba, it's a typical pastry. 
afraid to be alone and not to find someone to talk with or just someone who is ready to give a little attention. Here, the tradition of the pending coffee. Do you know the tradition of the pending coffee? Was born a coffee that someone has paid for someone else that he has never met and might never meet. Some, so if there is a poor and goes to a bar, to a cafeteria, he can have the coffee because someone else has paid for him. Okay. To give at least a moment of pause in a tough life and the life of an employee and poor people can be. So, of course, in all this beauty of the landscapes of interior architecture, we have also a high level, a high uh, rate of unemployment, okay? Because of uh, several reasons, okay? <laughs> I don't see. So, how did my professional life cross the culture of these places? This place is not just a physical space, but a symbolic representation that includes sense of belonging. You said the belonging, okay, yes. of community. Rootness and the perception of uses and factions that represent <coughs> community interests and needs. So I worked as a facilitator and an action researcher for urban planning in several townships, townships with several methodologies. So the, the citizens could decide <coughs> their own city. For example, do we have coal mines here? Okay, that were very polluting. As I had uh, 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 dumps, landfills, toxic waste uh, that were burned under the ground and also in the were uh, were storage uh, in the um, in the dumps in the landfill. So, what can we do? Well, how can we project the place in a different way? How can we do remediation of a requalification of this place? But this is up not just to politician and the urban planner, but hi, but all the community that has to participate. Okay, a psychologist can do also this. Also, a sociologist can do this. Okay, could uh, facilitate and do research and action research to get people involved in the design, in the project planning of the town. Which type of economics, okay, which type of, of new aims of the development that the city can have. So, let's go to the second domain, natural and natural resources. You have said the pizza, pasta. Local food and its cultural meaning. What does food mean for us? It's not just to eat fast food, food McDonald's, uh, Donkey Donald, Donuts. <laughs> no, it's not fast. <laughs> Our food okay. cannot no. be fast. Because it's a promotion of health, above all. If we eat well, we are well. It's like our uh, drug, our medicine, okay? It means hospitality, aggregation of a family or a community. That's a larger family. It's a safeguard, a safeguard of the traditional customs. It's a defense, it means defense of a territory against pollution and environmental exploitation. So uh, if there are farms uh, that uh, grow food, that grow cattle, that uh, produce local food, this is a, a, a way to defend the, the countryside, to defend the uh, the soil uh, against contamination, against the exploitation of some uh, entrepreneur, okay, or some <laughs> and so on. So, promotion of a local economy to support local small farms against the exploitation of immigrants to the poor level. We have several immigrants, African uh, people above all, that are exploited in the countryside or on the street with the prostitution. So we have to say, to say the good and the bad also. Yes. So promote local food, 
with this uh, uh, say, uh, it means also promote the three principles of permaculture. Do you know permaculture? Permaculture is a very <coughs> good, um, uh, we can define permaculture as a way of designing uh, sustainable environments. And uh, the three principles that uh, uh, Permaculture is based on uh, fish, uh, health, care, and people care. So if what we buy, what we consume, respects these three principles, it's healthy for us and for our environment. Otherwise, it's not. <coughs> Food that's promoting the health. We have, uh, of course, a lot of oil uh, trees. Uh, olive oil, mozzarella, do you know mozzarella, no? From the milk, but it's not mozzarella that you find here, eh? it's another mozzarella. <laughs> it's hard to find very good mozzarella here, at least I think. That is me made with the milk of the uh, buffalo. buffalo. And uh, food as aggregation of the community, so we can stay together, we can consume our food together, we can cook together, we can make pasta, make cakes. And we do several workshops to teach also this, uh, this concept. For example, once we organized a workshop with the kids that uh, had to press the grapes. You said grapes and why? Yeah, so they could have more um, in a closer relationship with the nature with their hands and with their feet. <laughs> and the photographs of a traditional custom, custom, so pasta is made, okay, homemade, it's a homemade with the green, with uh, crops. So food that's promoting local economy, the shop supply, sup, supply, supply, supply chain. Food as a tool of education to defend the land. So, starting from uh, the uh, children, you know, education with children. So, how my personal life got the culture of food and natural resources? As a social activist, I set up an organization to promote critical consumption and well being. We organized monthly, monthly workshops and promoted a system of participated granting of consumers. What does it mean? That the consumers went to look for the little farmers and they went to support the little farmers. So they just buy, buy these little farms that they know. I, uh, I don't buy something that uh, I don't know uh, its provenance, so where, is, uh, where this food comes from. Okay? So it's a way to support the economy. So, as a researcher, I studied what drives critical consumption and the recycling. So, turning point, turning point number one. I can uh, tell my story, uh, dividing it in, um, my story dividing it in two turning, turning points. From clinical psychologists and psychoanalytic psychotherapists, I became a community environmental and social psychologist and I have committed acting from the study of unconscious, the metaphor we can see, you can see the uh, underworld, okay? Where there are the Greek uh, and the Roman ruins and the uh, amphitheater and theater, okay? The unconscious, that something that we don't know for this reason it's unconscious. It's like, like the metaphor of a Freud of a, an iceberg, we just, are on the tip of this iceberg. Oh, everything is under under the sea. So, from the study of an unconscious to the study of an external environment and how it interacts with individuals and communities. So I went from <coughs> the underworld to the upper world to ask myself, how this environment, how this contamination, pollution, this social condition, affect, how does un unemployment, for example, affect individuals suffering, individuals' uh, well-being and that, okay? 
So what causes these drastic changes in my life? Let's go back to 2009. Diving in the other dimension of the second domain that is called nature's threat. What was, what happened to my, to this beauty? To the beauty of my territory. So toxic and urban waste. The pollution resulted from historical landfills now reopened in 2009 and the, and the illegal toxic waste dumps that were routinely set aside. How do, why do you think that this could happen? Give me some suggestions before that I present to you my... Why do you think that uh, all this contamination pro for, uh, caused by toxic and uh, urban waste, but uh, the majority of them were toxic waste that were burnt under, uh, underground, under the soil. Why do you think? They are industrial pollutants. Industrial pollutants, yes. So the factories from the north of Italy uh, found, found a very uh, easy and uh, cheap way uh, to manage their waste, giving them to the mob. Our local mob is called Camorra. Do you know it? Did you see uh, Godfather? Yeah, yeah. We have, <laughs> we have this, also this very... <laughs> But uh, now it's very widespread, okay? It's everywhere. It's not just in Italy. Uh, it started in Italy, but it's, <laughs> it went abroad. Uh, so one of the, mm, the most important business of the mob was waste management. They polluted the water that they <coughs> had to drink. And in some... Uh, uh, in some course that, uh, that we can hear, they said, ah, it doesn't matter, I can drink water from the bottle. I don't mind that I pollute my land, they said. They said, very, very, very stupid, okay, this mobster. So, uh, because I've, I, of course the pollutants are everywhere, in the air, in the, uh, in the water, you cannot just, okay, pollute a little territory. So, uh, this was caused by, the, of course, the collusion, the collusion and the agreement between mob and the politics and companies, enterprises, okay? So, which effects on health, agriculture, tourism, beauty of the landscape? The local community was exposed to serious health risk and harm, including increased cancer and neonatal malformation, an high level, an high rate of cancer in the community. Yeah, just in my family, too, my little family, in the older family, <laughs> okay. So, how did my professional life cross this threat? I discussed my PhD thesis on the determinants of the protest against landfills and waste fires in my region. Weak protest was explained by citizens' perception of the situation as very threatening and uncontrollable. Seeing protest as a risky, people experienced <coughs> helplessness, helplessness, as well as a double sense of fear, not just for the contamination, there was also a fear of reprisals, the dread of reprisals from the institution and the mob. So they were scared also to protest because they could be recognized by the mob and that they could also have some reprisals from the institution because they didn't trust the local institution. So I became, uh, how did my social and personal life cross this? I became a social activist in the committees against land and waste fires, and I participated in the start of a new political mob movement that now is present in the government. That's great. It, it is a gross, grassroots movement, okay? 
And many of these citizens, for example, this guy, my friend, uh, now is, this guy is the second most important um, politician in the, for environment uh, protection, for the, in the Ministry of Environment. And uh, for example, I was also with the brother of the judge that was murdered by the mob, Borsellino. And uh, because there was an agreement between the government, the central government, all the country of, uh, of Italy, so the central government, part of this government, and the mob. And so the cart room, finally, the cart uh, uh, showed that it was true, this agreement. This agreement was true. And the brother of this child uh, went uh, all in all the schools, in all the universities, where it was, uh, of course, possible to go to talk about this agreement between mob and uh, government. So it was very, very, very afraid. So eventually, the problem of awareness and protest increased, increased. So we organized a lot of demonstrations until uh, 2013, when uh, the alliance, alliance, uh, alliance of waste committees organized the biggest demonstration till now. 70,000 of people on the street to stop this uh, bias deed. And the political result of this story, the commitment of community leaders such as Priest, Priest, very famous Priest that uh, became very committed in this, in this fight, scientists, and uh, many political representatives come from this protest now, as I said to you. And also the Italian Minister of Environment was a police officer who discovered several legal landfills and currently proposing new laws and funds for remediation, recycling and penalty for environmental crime. So, let's see now the third domain people, custom, and communities. Coming to the present, illustrating my current interest, research, and commitment. And let's go to the turning point number two. The political victory was an art victory. <coughs> the movement that I trusted and I contributed to create reached the deal with the most xenophobic party in Italy. To govern, to govern the country. So this disappointment, and also the disappointment for working in rigid systems characterized by relationships based on hierarchical obedience without critical thinking and space for innovation. <coughs> I worked also for a non-profit organization. I was a, a training, um, a, a manager of the training media for volunteer, for volunteer organization. And the, I worked for some department of university as tools for okay. cats. And the meeting with the new social realities and eco villages and the center of uh, environmental education uh, made me aware that the outside and the inside change happened in the, at the same time, simultaneously. So the study of ecology and the study of psychology had to be integrated, to produce effective and enduring impact. We cannot change the world outside if we don't change the world inside and vice versa. Okay, so my, the, my new subfield of, of psychology is called eco-psychology that studies this interplay between the, uh, also our unconscious and the, uh, our, our psychological determinants of the behavior and the ecology, the ecology, the environment, nature. So, can we talk about a, a nature versus culture or not? Nature and culture are the, uh, two poles of a, are opposite or not? Maybe they can be integrated. They have to be integrated because the disconnection, according to psychology, our disconnection with the nature is one of the most important causes of our suffering. 
for so also of our individual suffering. And there is not an individual uh, well-being if there is not a collective well-being. We breath, we breath, we breath, uh, we breath uh, unhappiness. We breath injustice. And injustice are not just social. You, you cannot talk about just social injustice. The injustice are social, environmental, political, and economic together. <coughs> because what we saw, for example, the effects of contamination were more present uh, in the poor people, okay? The poor part of communities. We had the splitting of places. Some places where the, there is the, uh, some places that are wealthy, uh, so they have econo in, in economic rate of, um, of, wealth, of uh, wealth, uh, able, uh, they, they don't bear the effects of contamination, of pollution, not so much as the other things. So, uh, the word nature refers to the process of birth and the creative emergence. Why? To be ecological means to participate in the process of creative change of ourselves and our relationship with life. So nature is not something outside, okay? Environment is a, we see environment as something outside that we have to care with. It's us. We are nature. And we are not nature above all when we become creative in our mindset, in our way of thinking now our way to solve the problem. So there is a necessity to integrate the human transformation visible in the cultural products with our internal dimension of nature. And building communities, for example, in harmony with nature and ourselves. In Italy, it's a present, uh, 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 it's very, uh, a network <coughs> of eco-villages and uh, co-housing is very present now. It's one of the realities that I more I admire for the consistency between the action, the lifestyle, and the, the mindset, the values, and the norms. These are patches of my Italian community. I went to the Italian parliament to talk about the Gaia program with the University, European University of Rome that I'm working with and the global village in, the, in Tuscany, and the Kinger Garden in the Boot, Boot, Boot Kinger Garden, and uh, this is the center of uh, Pantale in, uh, in Umbria, that is a community of learning, of action learning, nature, because nature is a privileged context of learning, you can teach, nature is the first teacher. And so, yeah, these are pictures of the places, and uh, some precious factor of change. Uh, the people who are involved in permaculture, in, uh, in the deep environmental center of um, uh, education, and uh, also the professor Michael Edestin that uh, I met nine, nine, years, nine years ago, nine years ago, and he works at Ramapo College. And now I'm a Fulbright scholar at Ramapo College. So let's talk a bit about Gaia program, that is this uh, research intervention based on mindfulness. And uh, we did this program in all these uh, regions of Italy. And uh, also with the European University of Rome, uh, that now Bluefield College has an agreement with the European University of Rome. Bluefield State. Bluefield uh, State. State College. So uh, Gaia program is based on this, mot uh, in this part and this objective. So motivation, of course, you have to ask for a motivation before you have to engage the class. And after body self-awareness, emotional self-awareness and empathy, and global social self-awareness. So from individual to the global, uh, global uh, awareness. And we share, for example, health uh, charter. And um, the idea is to promote life skills. Do you know what life skills are? 
the life skills are total communication, empathy. I don't know if I have here on the slide or not. Empathy and um, uh, leadership uh, uh, skills and uh, skills that help us to live everyday experience and also to be successful in the wo at work. Okay, it's about the awareness of ourselves and about the decision making processes and problem solving. So, how can we manage group dynamics? So oh, the numbers of Gaia, uh, Gaia 20,000 people we bought, 1,000 professionals, professionals. These are the results, some of the results. Uh, so I, mm, we trained teachers that had to go to uh, lead the, the, the Gaia program in the, at, uh, at the school. And uh, what we found that the Gaia program with children improved all these dimensions uh, that are significant. Anxiety, depression, withdrawal, depression, uh, thought problems, uh, social problems, rule-breaking behavior, aggressive behavior as a, a marginal significance. Um, so how can we say uh, what we can see here in this graph, for example, an attention and hyperactivity in the experimental group decreased after the intervention. So the experimental group was the group that received the intervention, the Gaia program, while the control group is the group that didn't receive the intervention. So we have a, a, this line, the red line of the experimental group that decreased over the time after in the post test, okay? Uh, as well as rule breaking behavior, aggressive behavior, and anxiety depression, withdrawal depression. And we have something about anxiety before that if we don't do any intervention, anxiety of these children's school increases. Doesn't, uh, it doesn't stay still, but it increases, okay? So we need to do some things to deal with this anxiety uh, problems, okay? And anxiety is, a, um, uh, is like a, a sign of several type of problems in children. It can be also a sign of a, a high level of expectation of the parents, of the teacher, of the adults, Okay, of, uh, so it can say something about also the school system. How the school system works if they promote will be, or if they do not promote will be. Because if they have to increase the anxiety in the children, it's better that they don't go. Okay, <laughs> they can do homeschool. Okay, so the effects on internalizing and externalizing problem and um, yeah, also in the clinical and borderline course we have. Uh, I have, uh, uh, we have a good result. What about the next step? My question aims of research now are, what drives the sense of global community? Understanding risk for climate change, fiscal consciousness, and mindfulness as determinants of global community. So I'm trying to put together uh, individual factors as mindfulness, self-awareness of your body sensation, of your emotions, okay? And uh, some other variables that are more, uh, uh, are more, uh, uh, are variables of uh, social environmental psychology. So climate change risk. If I perceive more uh, risk for climate change, it's more likely maybe that I feel a sense of global community because it's a, it's a risk that it's not just for me, but, but for all the community. And the more I feel that I belong to a larger community, the more I concern, I'm worried about uh, this health uh, uh, and the effects of the climate change for the environment and for us, for our health. And the very fine the effectiveness of a program that reconnects with that, Gaia, in the adolescent, and the effect on emotional regulation will be in sense of a community environment. This is another part of my research. 
but I'm also a painter and I try to integrate art in uh, my action research and my practice as a, as a psychologist above all with groups and communities. Being natural means being creative. Every one of us can be an artist, can be creative. Gener generative of a circular process, that is a process of nature, it's circular, it's not linear. In art, I express my search for a synthesis to need the need to overcome polarity such as an emptiness and fullness, nature and culture, individual and environment, self and community, mind and body, spirit and matter. I express the need to feel, perceive and portray one's human ex existential condition through art that uses the image of a body. According to the first great stranger, stranger okay, it's uh, simultaneously released total and the natural body of Gaia. The name given by Dante will be felt. Okay, so art is not just an instrument, but it's a drive, a demo that manifests itself in the need of a chemical transformation of the being, learning from experience and regeneration of the world as it is still perceived and created by art. And this is my website, also so my art uh, work. Uh, if you want to see later, can my telephone in the name. So what did I learn from this story? Of course, all the paintings that you see, uh, all of the pictures are my experience. <laughs> there is no stranger if we expand our awareness. Everything belongs to me. If there are, I am the first one to know, the first stranger to know. Sharing a garden with the gratitude, the beauty, the beauty as it was a common good of all the living beings, saving it for the future generation. Learning is, learning is also a struggle to find a common language to communicate in order to create a global community using all the art and the tools we know to reach it. Thank you very much. I finished. <laughs> Any questions? Yes, yes the time. thank you. Thank you. Give me a thank you. You showed in 2009 uh, the fires burning and, and everything yeah. was going on there. And you also spoke about the people not wanting to really speak out or protest for fear from the mobsters and the government. The yes. But in 2013, you had 70,000 people protesting. What was the catalyst four years later to make those people step out there? Was the, what was the catalyst? I, as I said, uh, what I think, what can I analyze, is well, the catalyst was the involvement of the leaders, of the community leaders, um, such as some priests that, uh, that went also to the television, okay, to talk about uh, the mass media, the television to talk about uh, this problem. And uh, some people who started to fight for candidacy. So I have friends that are in the parliament, and uh, I'm also running now for the European Parliament. I hope that they win every seat. And uh, so um, they were elected because of all these fights that they did. And we had uh, some scientists, a community of scientists that started to do research about the effects on health. So about the high rate of uh, cancer and neonatal malformation. So all these factors together, mass media, and uh, the people started to, to be aware that maybe if they were dying for cancer, it was not because it was a punishment of God, okay? Or oh, oh, because, uh, uh, oh, because they did something to the sad. It was a problem of environment, of the fight that they did, and they could also smell the stench. This is also what I found <coughs> in my research, that when you have very visible signs of contamination, that you can see and you can smell, you, can have, you have to have the sensation, otherwise it's too much abstract. So they started to protest. They were also beaten by the police, of course, at the beginning. Okay. But seeing the effects like that, let their fears kind of go away to where they want to step up. Like, the people want to step up after they, after four years of seeing this, these effects. 
Yeah, but uh, yeah, it was uh, 30 <coughs> years that we have this problem. It was not a problem of uh, four years before. Oh, certainly, certainly. Yeah. But, but but in your slide, you spoke about yeah, the yeah, people yeah. not wanting to, to speak up and protest. And then in 2013, you had 70,000 people out there. So it just says that something happened in those four years. You know, yeah, yeah, it was things years. that happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because at the beginning, when I started my research, there was a very small number of protesters. Okay, but every town, this was also was very important, every town, every little town had its own committee, its own committee for the languages, for the civil rights problem. And after this committee went together to, uh, to a small empowerment, okay, to have a collective empowerment, and do uh, the, the, the demonstrations together. Yeah, thank you for your question. Thank you very much. What else? Give me question, please. I I did all these miles to come to you. I had also some uh, flight turbulences to come. The uh, fly, the plane couldn't uh, land the first time because it was too windy. But <laughs> I'm uh, coming back now by train. It was too scary for me. <laughs> <laughs> I will do 11 hours by train to go to New York. <laughs> Give me question. Uh, Don't be afraid. But uh, I have. No questions related to your presentation, which I enjoyed very, very much. Oh, thank you very um, much. I have, you know, invited um, students from three of my classes, medical sociology and <laughs> English sociology and marriage and family relations, which I think has benefited them a lot. Um, I have, you know, I have just, like, um, questions related to your experiences in Ramapo College. Ah, yeah. So okay. could you just enlighten us a little bit about okay, that? Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, I am teaching two courses in uh, Ramapo College. Uh, Ramapo College. One is about uh, uh, introduction to psychology, so it's a general course of psychology, and one is uh, more about environmental psychology. It's empowering individuals and the communities, lessons from environment in Europe. And I'm doing also research about global climate change. Uh, and I did, for example, a, a report for the CART. Uh, uh, cartoon in South Africa with a professor that I work with uh, at a team, of course, it's called, and uh, for the effects uh, of a, a community to measure uh, and, mm, and to value with the qualitative uh, method the psychosocial impact of living uh, ne nearby a coal mine in South Africa. <laughs> and do you have also this problem here? I can just image which type of effects, of a psychological effects, also of depression or whatever, okay, uh, um, uh, hopelessness that you have here because of these problems of contamination. And uh, yeah, it's, that's good that my, the professor that I work with is a very expert of this. He wrote uh, contaminated communities in, the, in environmental psychology. For this reason, I'm uh, at Ramapo College for it. <laughs> so what we Thank do. you. Yeah. Thank you. What else? Yes. 